All right, in this um, little tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the motion clip and how to motion clip blend different animations together. So I'll hop into this geo node I have. And uh, to start out with, I just have the base um, T pose model of uh, base uh, Mixamo character. I need to import some animations. So one way we could import animations is that we could just use this animation FBX file. Or um, to make this a little bit more clear, I'm going to use uh, separate nodes. So I'm going to use an uh, FBX animation import, which is essentially just this third output on this uh, FBX character import. So on this guy, I'll go ahead and I'll bring in a walking animation that I have for this uh, base model. Call this walking. And then I have a Roomba dance <laughs> animation I have for this character. All right, and so let's drop a bone to form. Plug this guy in. Rest in, and then we want the third input to be uh, one of these guys. And what we'll notice is we have uh, this walking animation now. And if we plug it in here, we have this Roomba dance animation. And neither of these are motion clips. They're just animated skeletons. And you can see them by uh, highlighting them with the uh, display flag. So to get them into motion clips, we have to drop a motion clip node. I mean, this is going to compute everything that is uh, the whole length of the animation. And it's going to basically cache all of that out into uh, one event. So you can see all of it at the same time, which can be useful for things. Um, but at this point, it's actually just annoying. Uh, one thing to note is if we plug a motion clip directly into a bone deform or something, it's not going to work because... This is not an animated skeleton. This is a motion clip info. So in order to get it back into an animated skeleton, we have to drop a evaluate motion clip. And let's go ahead and set that up there. And now it's back into a animated skeleton with this uh, motion clip evaluate. It's nice. We didn't. We haven't done anything to this yet. So let's say we wanted this um, animation. You see, it ends somewhere around fifty or so. Uh, we want this to loop. So a quick way to do that is a motion clip cycle. Drop that in there. And initially, it's not going to do anything. But we have this cycle after and cycle before value. So we can bump this up to add cycles after the animation. So you can see now it loops once. If I keep pushing it, it loops twice. You can do like loop five times. And it'll keep pushing it. One thing to note about motion clips, though, is that they have to cache. The longer your motion clip, the longer um, your cache is. So if I say I did something like I put this to 50, you'll see that uh, now it's going to take a little bit of time to compute because um, I have to uh, cache out 2,900 frames. So for really uh, dense skeletons or, or stuff you got a lot of attributes on or if you have a lot of like uh, full body IK or, or inverse kinematics and stuff and you're converting it to a motion clip, it might take some time. So that's just something to note about motion clips and how they work. If it's constantly trying to recache that motion clip, you can change this reload method from automatic to manual. And then the only thing you'll need to remember about that is that you have to hit this reload button anytime you want something above this motion clip to cache. So, but for now, I'm just going to use automatic. And great. So I have this. Um, and the first way... I'll go ahead and I'll duplicate all of this out. The first way we can go about setting this up is we can do a, uh, well, we only need one motion clip value, but we need a motion clip blend. So this is going to work similar to how any, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work close to how you'd expect a blend shapes or, or something to work. But um, I'll show you what's going on here in a second. Okay. And so now if I, Blend this effect in and out, you'll see we can change between the walk is actually a very annoying animation I chose. You can blend between these, but this is very slow and, and, and annoying, and, and there's a much better way to, to blend in this node. So instead of pulling that effect up and down, I would just leave this at one and then use this blend in and blend out uh, controls. So if we want to blend into this, uh, Call this Roomba. This Roomba animation. We will turn this to turn this uh, enable blend on, and you'll see immediately what this is doing is it's blending into the second input at frame one, and it, it says, "Okay, make sure that it's fully blended by frame one." So it's going to start blending 
at frame one. It's going to also finish at frame one. So it's instantly just going to jump to this Roomba animation. So if I did something like bump this up to 10, then you'll see that it's going to start uh, blending. It's going to start with this walking animation. It's going to blend into this Roomba animation fully by frame 10. And so if I wanted him to maybe say walk a little bit and then jump into the Roomba animation. So again, this is going to look really juggly just because because of uh, this um, walking animation isn't uh, centered. And I'll actually show you how to do that real quick in a second. But now you can see that it starts blending at frame 15 and it finishes by frame 25. So at 25, I'm fully into the Roomba animation and 15 is when I start that transition. Now, if I want to blend out, so I want to go back to the walking animation, I check on this enable blend and by default, it's saying it's going to uh, blend back out into the first animation at frame one. So it's we're not going to see any of this because it's already going to be blended back out. Um, so let's put this to something like 50 and like 55. And now we can see that we have this Roomba animation. And then once we hit 50, you can see it's going to blend back into the walking animation by frame 55. So I hope that makes sense on how these work real, qu real quick, just because also this is... I'll do a whole tutorial on this later, but for right now, just because this looks horrible, I'm going to drop a local motion, uh, extract local motion node for this walking animation because it's not uh, localized, so you can see he actually moves. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, and then by default, it usually finds the correct root. It is not. So uh, if you select... A node here it's going to use this node to centralize uh, the animation so if I select the hips you can see now he's centered um, and I don't know how great that is for what we're doing but um, it works fine for this I'll go into a lot about the uh, extract locomotion and, and stuff like stabilized joint and things like that in another video but for right now we're just worried about uh, blending these animations so we have the walk and then we blend it into the uh, Roomba dance with this motion clip blend. All right, so now that we're done with um, this motion clip blend node, I'm going to show you how we can use uh, uh, a different node to almost stack animations. When I say stack, I mean uh, play one animation after another. So if I wanted this walking animation to go through uh, its, its, its um, cycle or whatever, finish and then after that I wanted to play this Roomba dance animation and I wanted to blend them together smoothly and nicely but I didn't want to have to uh, essentially shift this Roomba dance animation in time or anything like that uh, I wouldn't want to use this motion clip blend I would want to use something called a motion clip sequence because this is going to essentially um, shift uh, these animations in time for you so if I plug this uh, first animation i'm actually going to get rid of the motion uh, clip cycles for right now just because i don't want uh, long loops on anything just so we can quickly see what's happening if i take the uh, motion uh, clip of the walking animation i plug it into the motion clip sequence then i take the second input from the roomba motion clip and i plug this into uh, motion clip sequence uh, it's going to essentially create a blend at the end of this walking animation. So I'll go ahead and I'll evaluate this. I'll delete this motion clip plan because we don't need it anymore. And then we'll see this walking animation and then it's going to immediately jump to this Roomba dance animation, which you will notice if I plug the Roomba dance animation directly in to the bone deform that it, it it's over at this point. It, it ends, but even though um, it ends, this motion clip sequence is pushing the start of this to the end of, of this sequence. So we can play them one after another. So on the motion clip sequence, the moment you'll see we get this really sharp jump from 47 to 48, um, where it jumps from the walk cycle to uh, the Roomba dance animation. And we don't want that, so there's a few ways we can um, blend these together. And uh, the quickest one is the just default 
blend frames. And so say we put five here, then it's going to blend, use five frames in between these sequences to blend uh, these animations. Now, the one thing about preserve length is preserve length isn't going to change. It's not going to push. It's not going to overlap these sequences. So what's the best way I can do to explain this? One second. <laughs> All right. So to explain this, I'm going to I'm going to do uh, I'm going to open up a little paint uh, doc. So for this, um, for preserve length, um, hold on. Oof. <laughs> guess I don't know how to work paint. Uh, so we have a clip one. And we have, I'll make clip, I'll make clip two red, just so we can, uh, or yellow, just so we can see it better. Um, I don't know if I can move these things around after or not. So, essentially, preserve length is going to uh, keep the start of this animation here. Um, and here it's not gonna, it's not gonna push this thing back or anything like that. Um, but instead, it's going to just start blending into this first frame of this animation and blending out of this last frame of this animation um, in the middle here. So it's going to kind of create this little uh, area. The one thing to note about this is that uh, it's going to look a little bit weird because at this point in time for this uh, Roomba animation, it's not started yet. Like you, it, The actual animation hasn't started yet. So uh, it's going to be blending into that rest frame, so there's not going to be this overlap of animation. So I personally like the overlap sequence best, which is uh, my, let's leave this guy. What that is, and I should go back a little bit. So that would be taking, say, the second animation, or it would be taking both of them technically, but it would be blending them over top of each other. So this would actually change a bit, whereas uh, the end of the animation wouldn't stay the same length but we would get a more smooth overlap because there's actual animation happening on both of these and it's it's very similar to like a dissolve effect or something like that in um, Premiere or something so you'll see we get a little bit smoother of a overlap here we can uh, increase this blend so cool and then we can keep throwing on different motion clip sequences after this. So we could we could add another one if we wanted to and then blend back into the walking animation. And that would push that to the end of, of this output. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, that's essentially how we go about um, blending different uh, clips together. And the motion clip evaluate is very key to making sure these work. Again, if you plug this directly into the bone deform, you're not going to get anything. Make sure you have a motion clip evaluate after you convert to motion clips. All right, thank you. Um, that sums up this tutorial. I'll do a few more this week. And uh, in the comments, please let me know uh, what you guys want to learn. And I'll be happy to add that to my list of to-dos for this series. Um, I love making these courses for you guys. So uh, thank you.